How's it going, nerds? I'm Atheline. This is League of Legends Wild Rift. And to kick off the summer, I'm going to start up with a new series. Well, Wild Rift already is a series on the channel, but I guess like a sub-series. I have come to realize that just looking up Wild Rift on YouTube will send you like a bunch of challenger players how to play a certain champion better. However, a lot of these things don't apply to low elo and I want to make this video and a few others showing that like I guess how to rank up now this specifically is for jungle however I'm also going to be like talking about other lanes as well and yet I guess how to build right I'm playing Fiora jungle here just because it's very dynamic this is a flex pick jungle usually played in the Baron lane and I said heck I've seen it played before in jungle by an enemy who absolutely dominated me. I'm gonna try it myself. Something that I'm pretty sure that is the most important thing in jungle is the versatility of that pretty much almost any champion, even ADCs can be junglers. However, not as effective. Fiora though is, uh, diff is way different. Now, <laughs> this video is gonna be, it's gonna show kind of like my shortcomings just as a platinum player, which you'll definitely see my, I guess like me just not knowing what to do sometimes, which I'll be able to point out. But uh, this series is to highlight that, I guess like how a platinum player should play as a jungle. And then I'll do this con repeatedly as other champions. And heck, even while I'm ranking up, I'll make videos on how like a diamond to emerald, even challenger hopefully. We'll be getting there on stream sometime soon this summer, hopefully. But um, yeah, let's get like analyzing the gameplay. So I start off with Sweeper, just because Fiora is supposed to abuse her early game. Fiora's early game and ganks are pretty much insane. They're they're even way better than a lot of the junglers, such as like Nunu and let's say hmm even Rengar. Because Rengar is just limited to his bushes. Fiora comes in qu quick. Let's say you're a half health ADC. You're immediately dead. Right after you have the procs. She has the second of immunity. Just as I showed you in that second ability. Also we have a really dope echo here. Uh, that was my fault though. I just. <laughs> like I said it shows my shortcomings. Not knowing when to retreat. Not knowing when to go in a fight sometimes. Which is everything that I guess. Most platinum players suffer from. However, this should get more, like, limited as you become more bold, and as you rank up, you know what you're gonna do. But, um, yeah, <laughs> so I start on red blue right after this, just because my normal clear for a Fiora would- is heavy ganks, heavy ganks, even before- even at level 2. So you'd first initially clear off red, and then you look to the mid lane, or the lane that is closest to red, whether it be top or a top or duo lane. You look for a gank there. And if not, you continue clearing. You usually clear Krugs and then move on to a Scuttle. Then you could cross over to mid lane. Sweeper first though, because you want to eliminate wards. And then you can cross over and get the, your blue. And then the other Scuttle. Which I couldn't do, which I couldn't double Scuttle. Because the enemy already had taken Scuttle there. So, Olaf, this is a very tough champion to go against, just because of the true damage. Again, well, Fiora is not really a tank, but it would suck, let's say, if you're playing a more of a tank champion such as Jarvan or Jin Zhao, just in case you're stacking on armor. Olaf is pretty much a counterplay to everything right now, as the only way you can really beat him is either to kite him or out damage him. Which is really tough, like, he's all, is like, anti-CC, and then he can just rush through. That's all he does. All he has to do. So you're going to be seeing some trouble with that. However, he's not going to be the biggest problem. Alright, but make sure you have time to clear out jungle as much as you can. Just because you need that gold since you're not playing a lane. And especially as Fiora. Fiora jungle, the only bad thing about it is that you aren't having that consistent gold flow. And I just got a kill stolen there, just because I didn't feel like auto-attacking, I was waiting to hit my proc off. And I would have been able to get a heal there, and I would have been able to heal Nasus as well. 
But however, that is very unfortunate. And did you see my hesitation there? That is something that in higher elos, I would have gotten punished for. And just as it shows, I would have, and I did. But I would have probably gotten punished way faster. There are things like this where, let's say, you're so close that, let's say, a mere second of hesitation could put you in <laughs> respawn time, which that did happen. However, being a platinum player, and if you want to play jungle at all, make sure you take those moments of hesitation with boldness, especially when the enemy player does that. Because let's say you come out of a bush in the top lane, okay? You have a really fed Garen who's pushed his wave all the way. So that means that your lane, your top lane doesn't have prio, so their lane does. Make sure you go for that gank, because that gank will put you give you gold it'll also take the fed champion off for some time so make sure you have your priorities just analyze which enemy is going to be the hardest one something new that <laughs> you should definitely learn though and that i have definitely learned over like the past streams twitch link in the description by the way is know when to do the objective such as Rift, Herald, or Dragon. And don't be afraid to not start it and get let the other team start it. Just because either way, sometimes you're going to die. And even like if you start it, or if you it, go try to go for it with your whole team, it's worse if you guys all die, then you lose the objective. Because <laughs> you don't want to die and lose the objective, and you don't want to lose the objective at all so which is like the less e lesser evil which of course is losing the objective now here i'm pretty sure i steal actually no i don't <laughs> uh i was i could have gotten it gone on just a little bit more stealing is something that should also be really worked on i've gotten a few barren steals before especially i think i had another piece of footage for this video however i'll leave that to next week just because that's another champion and i said don't want to make this video too long for you guys. Now what I should have done at that dragon fight, since I didn't have any help, and the Nasus is actually doing the right thing by staying up top and farming. He's kind of a uh, win condition, since he's a late game champion. What I should have done is started Rift Herald, and just left dragon to be. And then we would have been able to probably take bot turret as well, just because the enemy jungle was preoccupied. Now, <laughs> that was an early smite. However, I did need the help. So make sure you actually like pace yourself, concentrate when you're smiting, especially when stealing. Just because it's like the split second thing. Those are like the things that actually cause problems. <coughs> yeah, so uh, this Gnosis is, he's, a, he's pretty good. I mean, he's getting his stacks. He knows what he's doing, obviously. Now, something that you should be aware of when playing a jungler is aware of your team composition. So let's say your team's all weak. You could play an assassin like Echo or Kha'Zix. However, that's just leaving your team with like even less opportunity to win. Just because you have all these fleshy characters who are just one step away from getting exploded. So it would have just been better if you went tank, which tank for jungle is really viable. That is something really worth doing. Just because, I mean, you armor items don't cost as much as damage items. Which especially, it sucks when you're playing an AP jungler such as Echo or Morgana. Just because that farm is not coming in as fast. Also, scaling junglers like Echo who do have to wait, wait for the gate, late game. Like Evelyn and Echo. Well, what are some others? Um, dang, I'm gonna have to think more. So far, I'm playing like pretty much almost all the junglers except for like Jax and Wukong. I'm not good at all of them, but I'm uh, good enough, I guess. Uh, hey, you guys will see if I end up making a video about it. But um, another reason why I made this video is because a lot of people have been asking me, "Hey, I'm bad at <laughs> Wild Rift. How do I get better?" I'm like, oh, okay, you know what, instead of t talking to you individually, I'll give you guys like a lesson. Now, this was bad just because I could have killed Graves here way faster, but I didn't. And I ended up getting the kill stolen from me, which 
kills, especially successful ganks. Those are so important. Those are so very important. You need the kills. Especially when the support comes up and takes them from you. That kind of sucks. And I understand. Because <coughs> Gal, I mean, sorry, not Gal, Nasus, if he stole the kill, because he needs, like, he's our win condition. He's stacked for late game, unkillable. He slows, he's got pretty much ultimate CC. No one can get away from him. He can push tower to solo. But support stealing the kill, that isn't really helping the team at all. Kind of sucks. And especially as, like, an assassin. You need that gold just because if you get behind, it's going to be so hard for you to make that up. Because your goal is to focus down on, let's say, a single target. Or to burst a single target and then wait a few seconds to do the same to another. But having less gold and having a te team that's very fed. Let's say, um, yeah, even if they're tanks. You want to make sure what they're building just so you know how to counter build. Just if, like... Let's say you're an AP and they're building anti-AP. Make sure you build anti-armor, anti like Void Staff. But uh, yeah, especially for assassins, I'm more of an assist jungler, ending up with like, let's say 12 assists and like only three kills. That happens a lot to me. Make sure your ganks are successful. Like if you're playing, for, playing on a team, like a five man, four man, make sure that your support and even your mid lane, because if anything, you're relying more on your ADC and your uh, top. But if your top's like a tank, then I guess you could give it to your mid lane, because that's like makes sense. So here I'm like just bursting down the Olaf as fast as I can, and as you see, I'm not doing as much damage. However, I could have gone for a for a Divine Sunder. Right now, I'm building Triforce, Proto Belt, and Death Stance. Just to get the health back. Another thing you could build on this, like I said, would be Divine Sunder. However, let let me tell you something. The power, the really big power gap, where you just evolve in like strength for Fiora, is I would say when you get Proto Belt. Now Proto Belt is absolutely <laughs> insane. I feel like let's say Triforce. Triforce only keeps you up with the rest of the team. That's the only reason I have that first item. If anything, if I could get more gold faster, I would get the Proto Belt first. Just because it's so essential to using the ultimate. So let's say, you're, you have an enemy, and your proc is up. So that means that, let's say if you hit the proc with Fiora, you do way more damage than <laughs> what a normal attack would be. So let's say you hit your proc with your first ability. You ult, you Proto Belt, and the Proto Belt hits the proc and does the damage as well. Which means that you can use your first ability, even though it's like on a low cooldown, you can use that to hit another proc. And then you can also use your third ability to make it do even more damage, which is pretty much the, I guess, combo for Fiora that you want to do. Now, I'm pretty sure, yeah, I go for Death Dance next. Then pretty much other, after that, a good idea would be Spirit Visage if the team isn't running any anti-heal. Just because your ultimate's healing you, your death stance is healing you. And even after that, you can get a Blade of the Ruin King. However, that's, <laughs> that's a really heavy vamp build. And what I'm seeing right now is that the enemy team has a lot of like healing and vampirism. Which is the Aurelia and I think the uh, Graves as well. Just because the Graves builds... Bloodthirster, which makes no sense to me. I've only played Graves twice, and I play him crit. Um, you need the, make yeah, like I said, make sure you know what the enemy team is building, because this anti heal really comes in clutch. Just because the Aurelia right now is their carry, and not the Olaf. Also, this Ezreal really good. You want to burst down the ADC as fast as you can. I was thinking about another game um, as a viewer where I couldn't get the kill. And he was like low and I ended up dying to turret. And another thing. The confidence is needed. Especially when diving. So let's say you're playing a Vi. Or even Diana. Because that's a heavy diving champion. Make sure you know you're bold enough to dive. I think that just the mind thing. Is what you need to have. To be ready. To be a successful jungler. Just because a lot of the champions are like. Quick, get in the tower, kill, get out, 
and not get hurt, or get in the team fight, kill, hopefully you don't get CC'd, pray to god for that, and then get out, and then rinse, repeat, and do that to the whole team until you get a pentakill. Though, I, you just have to have the right mind space to know like when to go in, or when, and make sure you don't hesitate. You see right there, I missed my... <laughs> I missed my proto belt, which is like a mega rookie move, and I'm also low health. However, I successfully get away, just because Graves did not decide. Graves actually missed that. He probably would have been able to kill me if he would have hit. Now, right now, in 4, 3, and 5, 5 assists. Oh, shows you that all of my ganks have not been fully successful. Which, what you're trying to aim for, even let's say if you're stealing kills from your top lane, your mid lane, if you feel like you are the best player, and you're showing that you are, and you're not feeding, make sure that you take as much gold as you can. Because as a hyper carry like Fiora, you want to be able to hit and do a ton of damage. Now here, I probably would have been able to get the kill. Actually, I did. But I probably would have been able to kill the Ezreal if I would have been faster. If I would have probably focused Ezreal, he would have been dead. However, I saw the Graves as an opportunity, and then I decided to hesitate, say which one do I want to take more, which I guess the fast thinking that you need is very key. And hopefully this will be better as I start ranking up. So my team right now is 1 AP, to 1 tank as well, even though that's more AD, but he's building tank. And then we have a Senna. And a Tristana. The Tristana right now would not be the hyper carry because now it's reaching like a 16 minute mark. It's more late game. And right now, I guess it would be your time to shine. However, as you have to know your champion and where their strong suit is, how like just like Pantheon is a early game champion and Vagar is a late game champion, as he has enough time to hit. I mean, stack up his damage. Echo was a late game champion as he has to stack up as well. As full, <laughs> full build Echo is just brutal to deal with. Fiora is more of a mid and early game champion. What you want to do as fast as you can is end the game. Because, like, let's say Fiora right... I mean, sorry, not Fiora. Irelia right now is destroying everyone, even though she just died. Just That's just because we had a good teammate. We have good teams. Aurelia, if she would have gotten more fed, could have probably destroyed us all. Just because that's the type of champion Aurelia is. Which is why we have to like rush down, just in case the Olaf gets really swole. But um, yeah, that's going to do it for this video. I guess my critique... Pl no, actually no. My critique, no. Please critique this game. Just because I want you guys to think on how to be a jungler. And also, I want to hear what you guys say on how I could be a better jungler as well. Because we're both learning together. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching. See you, nerds.